let me set the parameters here and then try to explain to you what this l- this alleged prosecution of Donald Trump actually is. In fact, you know what? Let me start there. What is this? Uh, this is a really bad idea. And I want to, if you will forgive me, and you've got to because I'm your host, I want to explain to progressives why this is a bad idea. And I, I, I know I'm going to persuade very few. But let's just talk about this and take Trump out of the equation. And it's hard to take Trump out of the equation because people are extremely emotional about Donald Trump. There is very little rational conversation to be had about Donald Trump. But let's just let let's take this back. The district attorney in New York has a person they wish to prosecute. They want to prosecute the specific crime based on what we know from the public statements of the people from the district attorney's office who have been involved in this. Let's remove the the alleged criminal defendant and let's just focus on what we know from people inside the district attorney's office who have left the investigation. What they say is the district attorney wants to prosecute someone. In this case, it's Donald Trump, but let's, again, take him out of the situation here and just deal with this rationally. What the prosecutors want to do is prosecute someone for a paperwork cover-up, essentially cooking the books at the corporation to hide a payment to someone. In New York City, in the state of New York, that in and of itself is a misdemeanor. You arrange your books in order to cover up payment to someone. That is a misdemeanor in New York. And the statute of limitations has run. You cannot prosecute this person for a misdemeanor, for covering up books to hide a transaction because the statute of limitations has run. However, if you show that the cover-up on the books is to cover up a crime, then it becomes a felony. So a misdemeanor is something that is less than $1,000 or less than a year in jail. A felony is more than $1,000, more than a year in jail. The statute of limitations is longer. A felony is a big crime. A misdemeanor is a minor crime. If you cover up the books to hide the commission of a crime, then the felony is a longer statute of limitations. You don't actually have to convict the person for that other crime. You just have to show that he cooked the books in commission of that crime. Never mind he wasn't prosecuted. You just show that the elements of the crime were there and you can tie it into this felony. So what crime did Donald Trump commit according to this theory of the case? And again, we're going based on the statements of people in the prosecutor's office, not from Donald Trump's team, not from the lawyers, not from any outside person. What do the people inside the prosecutor's office say the crime was? According to them, their argument is that Donald Trump, let's just say the the would-be defendant, let's keep it rational by not mentioning his name so people don't become emotional. They say the defendant was running for office and covered up a payment to a mistress, and it's a campaign violation because he did not report it on his campaign finance report. And had he, he would have gotten campaign dollars from his company. And you can't, under federal election law, corporations cannot give candidates money. So the corporation is alleged to have funded money to a lawyer to reimburse the lawyer who, out of the lawyer's pocket, paid a mistress to keep quiet to avoid fallout on a political campaign. The alleged transaction is that a lawyer paid a mistress hush money. The corporation then paid the lawyer money to reimburse the lawyer. The 
company accounted for it as legal expenses when actually he was just a middleman and the money was really being flowed to the mistress through him. That is a campaign finance violation, supposedly. And that is a felony. So what the district attorney says is, here's your felony. The company used someone as a conduit, that's key language, a conduit to pay someone else. Under campaign finance law, of which I actually practice law, when you pay legal fees, they must be legal fees. When you pay an outside consultant, you can pay generally consulting fees. If your lawyer is not your outside campaign consultant, you can't pay your outside lawyer something that you claim to be legal fees or consulting fees when really he's a conduit, again, key language here, he's a conduit to funnel that money to someone else for some other purpose. That's what they're alleging. On top of that, you, it's compounded by the fact that the company made the transaction, it, not the Trump campaign team. So the company made a payment on behalf of the Trump campaign to a lawyer as a conduit to pay hush money to a mistress so that the campaign didn't have to put it in the campaign paperwork to show they were paying a mistress to keep quiet. Now, John Edwards did this. Remember John Edwards? John Edwards arranged for someone to pay money to shut up a mistress, Riley, what's her name, he had a, had a child with. He was prosecuted and the case was thrown out. Now, prosecutors say it could have been better prosecuted and he could have gone to jail for this, but he wasn't. So for those of you who are befuddled by all of this, and for those of you who are progressives, maybe the light bulb is going on now as to why this is a deeply problematic case. The district attorney for New York is claiming that a political campaign violated a campaign, federal campaign finance law. Now, here's the side twist that you have to understand. Federal campaign law supersedes all state law. So if you commit a violate, if you commit a crime in relation to a campaign finance violation, according to the plain understanding text and practice of the federal election code, a state level prosecutor can't prosecute you for that. Only the federal government can. So now you see where it's getting more complicated for the state prosecutor. The state prosecutor doesn't want to prosecute the defendant for a campaign finance violation. The state prosecutor wants to prosecute the defendant for a state law about corporate accounting practices. But in order to prosecute the defendant for corporate accounting practices, he's got to use a federal crime that the federal government alone can prosecute someone for. This has never been done in American history, and that's the thing you got to understand here. This has never been done in American history. There has never been a state prosecutor anywhere in the country who has attempted to use a federal campaign finance violation to prosecute someone at the state level for a completely separate matter, a completely separate law. That's what the DA in New York is trying to do to Donald Trump. If you don't understand why people are incensed about this, I hope you have a better sense of it now. Those of you on the left can say, we want the SOB in jail. Okay, I can't stop you from having that opinion. But the how and the why and the how to do it matters greatly. To take a federal campaign finance violation that the U.S. attorney declined to prosecute, the Federal Election Commission declined to prosecute, the Biden administration declined to prosecute, the U.S. attorney general declined to a prosecute, a special counsel declined to prosecute. Robert Mueller looked into this. Remember, the, all of these people declined to prosecute this crime, alleged crime. And the former prosecutor, Cyrus Vance, declined to prosecute this in New York, said he couldn't do it, didn't think he could do it. It was too tenuous, too dubious to be able to do. So Alvin Bragg, the current district attorney for the city of New York has decided he will do what the U.S. attorney refused to do, what the attorney general refused to do, what the uh, independent counsel refused to do, what his predecessor in office refused to do. He's decided he's going to do it. 
the odds of him being able to do it are pretty slim if the judicial system is fair. Again, because he's attempting to allege Donald Trump committed a crime for which no one ever prosecuted him for, although they knew of the situation. He has to do several steps removed from what he wants to prosecute him for in order to get it. He's got to find a hook in order to get around the statute of limitations. This is his hook to get around the statute of limitations. This has never been done in American history. But they're going to do it on Donald Trump, and they're going to do it on Donald Trump because people on the left want Donald Trump in prison for something. They're desperate to find something. Teflon Don, they've called him, because everything they've thrown at him hasn't stuck. Now, Trump himself has taken advantage of the situation. Last week, it was Donald Trump's legal team that was the source of all of the newspaper articles that the indictment was coming. It was the Trump legal team that suggested he was going to be arrested on Tuesday or Wednesday of last week. And how did he use this? He used it to generate millions of dollars into his campaign coffers. It was a grift by the Trump team. You see the district attorney's office. They can't speak about ongoing criminal uh, matters before a grand jury. Their their hands were tied. Donald Trump can came out and come out and say that we've been talking to them. The district attorney's office can confirm that yes, we've been talking to them, but we can't tell you about what. So the Trump team began to speculate. Oh my gosh, all these things happen. We we're going to go to jail. He's going to be arraigned. He's going to be handcuffed. He, he's, he's, it's going to be, they're not going to put him on parade, but this is going to happen. I had to take all my radio equipment with me on vacation in case it actually happened. And it turns out the district attorney's office had made no such agreement. But Donald Trump put it out there and said, they're going to arrest me, give me money. And people fell for it. It turned into a huge grift. They took advantage of the story. The district attorney set himself up for this. They also, the Trump campaign, tried to turn the tables on Ron DeSantis for not defending him and then daring to attack him and the like. Yes, it's true. I wrote last week while I was on vacation. I did point out, had Donald Trump kept his pants on and not had a sexual affair with a porn star while his wife was pregnant, none of this would be happening. Donald Trump's lack of impulse control got him into this mess. Donald Trump's lack of impulse control regularly gets him into these messes. But just because Donald Trump lacks impulse control and had an affair with a porn star while his wife was pregnant and thereafter gave birth doesn't mean that a prosecutor at a local level in New York should be able to use a federal alleged crime that no federal official has bothered to prosecute him for to then have a hook to get around the statute of limitations. You can want Donald Trump in jail or not. You can think he's entirely innocent of this and the affair never happened. You Whatever you want. But you should at least be willing, as a matter of intellectual honesty and rationality, to understand it is really problematic for precedent's sake, for what's happening in the country, for our discourse as a divided nation, for a county prosecutor in New York to take a federal crime that no one has prosecuted and claim that a former president violated that law and should therefore be prosecuted under a related state matter, even though he's never been found guilty of that federal crime. It's a really big deal that they're going down this road, and it's deeply corrupting to the system and sets a whole lot of precedents Republicans could thereafter use themselves against Democrats, which is why this is a terrible idea for New York's prosecutor to do this.